Each colonial region developed in its unique own way due to the climate and region and the people who settled there. It is important to understand how each region was unique for several reasons. First, each region would respond differently to England's growing domination over them, and thus some regions, like New England, will lead other colonies into revolution. Second, once independence is won, each region will have very different needs and expectations from the new republic that will unite them all. How will our founding fathers meet the demands and wants of all citizens from many different colonies? This map gives you a visual of the 13 colonies. The southern colonies included Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. The middle colonies included Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. And New England colonies were Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Maine was part of Massachusetts, and Vermont was disputed territory between New Hampshire and New York. The New England region or north was unique in that it was made up of small, close-knit towns that centered around greens. Much of the colonial New England is still with us today. Most towns still have greens or centers, and every town in New England is marked by white congregational steeples. This is because New Englanders were settled by Puritans. Puritans were English descendants who fled to the New World for religious freedom, and much of their Yankee ingenuity defines us today. New England was very unique because of the Puritans who settled here. Puritans broke away from the Church of England because they felt that all people should be able to read the Bible, and so they believed in public education. For the first time in the history of mankind, small public schools sprouted up all over New England. People could read, and they could read about the ideas of John Locke. Towns were centered around the church, and the, church, the Puritan church slowly evolved into what we call the congregational religion today. Towns were run by direct democracies. Church members had a vote on all laws that were made for their town. New England's economy was really based on fishing, shipbuilding, and whaling. International trade made up New England's economy, and that is where we got our wealth from. It's kind of strange to think about trade and fishing and shipbuilding when most of us live in the farming town of Ellington. Inland New England did have many farms. Ellington was a farming town even in colonial days. But the crops that were grown in New England were sold at local markets and throughout New England. Those crops were not shipped to other regions of the world. So while we had a small farm base, the major economy for New England came from fishing, shipbuilding, and whaling. That's where the country or the, na the region really got its wealth from. We can even see that today when we think about Connecticut's Gold Coast towns or the towns along the shore which seem so rich even today. The middle colonies were also unique. Now the middle colonies had much larger farms and they produced a lot of food that went all over to the regions. So the middle states were actually growing and shipping their food out. Um, corn, wheat, meat, cattle, lumber, pigs, and they would send their food up to feed people in New, New England and down to feed people in the south. The middle colonies were very different from the New England colonies. Traveling through colonial America in the middle region, you would find people from many different regions or places in the world. The middle colonies consisted of people from Germany, Finland, Ireland, France, the Netherlands, England, Scotland. There were also many more religions in the middle colonies. Um, Jews, many different forms of the Christian religions, Quakers, um, Presbyterians, and other people who were Christian but didn't necessarily follow the Catholic religion or the Anglican Church of England. The middle colonies were the most egalitarian. It means that the people were most equal. It was most diverse. People in the middle colonies were very accepting of people from other backgrounds and differences. Unlike your New England colonies, the middle colonies did not have public schools, but they had many private schools run by churches and individuals. So even in middle colonies, people were very educated, or far more educated than in other parts of the world. We consider the middle colonies our breadbasket region. The region, again, where large farms and grain and livestock were produced. Food would be shipped out of the middle colonies, up to New England, and down to the southern states. The middle colonies also were known for their craftsmanships, barrel makers, um, uh, people who were able to work with metal and woods, 
and other types of crafts. Local governments in the middle colonies were a little bit different than in the north. They were based on representative democracies. People in the middle colonies would vote for people to serve office and make rules for their region at the local level. The southern colonies were a very different world from both the north and the middle. In the southern colonies, large plantations grew. Cash crops such as rice, indigo, and tobacco were grown in these middle colonies, in, the, in these southern colonies. And these southern colonies were settled by people who left England not because they were seeking religious freedom um, and not because they were upset at England for any reason. The people who settled the in southern colonies were English people who were looking to make a profit. They considered themselves English countrymen. They considered themselves the farmers of the big London city. So people who settled in the southern colonies were very loyal to England. Unlike the middle colonies, where many people weren't even from England, and unlike the New England colonies, where people had left for religious freedom, people in the south stayed very loyal to the England for a long time. There are very few schools in the south. Most wealthy plantation owners hired tutors for their children. The dominant church of the South was the Church of England, which was also connected to the King of England. So church and state in the South were almost intertwined. Your Southern colonies started out as royal colonies, where the King would appoint governors to rule. There were some Congresses within the Southern states, but even those Congresses were, the people who sat in those Congresses were of the upper class. English. Southern society followed England's class structure with very few wealthy families at the top and many, many poor people and many slaves. The South had many slaves to run the plantations and to grow the cash crops. The South exported all of these cash crops, but they needed to import all of their goods. Their clothes, their curtains, their products were all imported from England. Remember, the people in the South considered themselves English countrymen. Their food would be, have been imported from the middle colonies. So, in conclusion, the three regions were very different. The North had public schools, the Middle, private schools, the South only tutored their wealthy people. The people who settled these regions were very different. In your North, it was a very large English-based but Puritan people who settled here for religious freedom, who saw themselves as separate from England, oftentimes referring to themselves as Yankees rather than English. In the Middle Colonies, you had a very diverse egalitarian society where everybody was of different backgrounds, different religions, different um, languages, different customs, yet they saw themselves as equal. And in the South, you had many, many English people who prided themselves in being English, who saw themselves, again, as these English countrymen. The North was a place where trading and shipping, whaling, was the major industry. In the middle colonies, wealth came from selling food and crops to the north and the south. And in the south, your economy was based on cash crops, plantations, and slaves. Even government was slightly different in each region. In the north, we had town meetings, where local people would go and meet at their local congregational churches to vote on all issues that ran their town. In the middle colonies, people would vote on representatives to serve them and make their laws for them. And in the South, there was a harsh ruling upper class. Really, only the upper class had any political say. The South modeled England. And the South was really very much ruled by the King of England and the governors who he appointed to those southern colonies.